For as long as I've been canoeing, I've pretty much traveled exclusively with my wife Ashley or by myself. The odd trip, I'll gladly paddle with my brother or some close friends, but never with complete strangers. The thought of building relationships with people you had never met before while trying to complete a canoe trip was definitely one that hadn't crossed my mind. But when the opportunity arose to spend the better part of a week on a canoe trip with Xander, Max, and John, I thought I'd give it a go. So Xander, Max, and John all have YouTube channels. And the interesting thing with YouTube is that you can get a sense of who people are before you ever meet them. But would these guys be the same in person? Or is YouTube just an act? This is the story of four strangers that came together and attempted to paddle through rain, wind, rivers with no water, all while getting to know one another. I have to say, it was going to be an interesting experience. Day one, we wouldn't start until quite late. After a very quick introduction, we were on the water and making our way across the lake. As the only person there that didn't know anyone else, it made for an even more interesting start. We wouldn't be long finding a campsite for the night where we would set up camp, cook our meals, and come up with a basic plan on how we were going to tackle this trip. Okay, forecast, and then blast out some distance down to whitefish. Yeah, it does, doesn't I matter to me. Like, just we'll play it by ear, but like just a thought to set up a base camp for two nights. And I'll have to move the, camp during the that, really I'm rainy weekends. Nice. Yeah. I would just say, I would yeah, just say, like, that'd especially, that'd awesome. like, I, I would say <laughs> that I'm totally cool with that. But just like, let's find a sweet campsite. If exactly. Can. If the like, campsite yeah. warrants it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. You know, yeah, it looks did, like Brad, it's on the top. Brad said he did the whole loop in two days. Did he not? Yeah, yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah. That's Brad. Yeah. He's yeah. a freaking adventure racer. Yeah. <laughs> Only a few hours in, and there was already an interesting group dynamic. John seemed quite orderly, in a good way. Max seemed quite artistic, and Xander seemed carefree and laid back. As for me, these guys said I sounded extremely Canadian and they liked my tarp. We were off to a good start. You don't, you don't worry about your mic. Eh? I've left this the whole thing out in the rain pretty heavily, so... It's Going. This mic. Don't uh, listen okay. to him. This is such a bad idea. <laughs> He's gonna get yeah, home and like, the mic's gonna be like. <laughs> With a rainy start to day two, we really took our time getting going. Talking about cameras and past canoe trips while eating breakfast and packing up was a nice way to start the day. But the theme of day two would be the unknowns of the river we were about to drag our way through. There's the first portage, which is pretty straightforward. Not really a whole lot to it. Lots of camera gear in the way, canoes. We had all read a trip report from Brad Jennings of Explore the Backcountry, who had completed this relatively short loop in two days. So we thought, with six days, this should be a walk in the park. Well, we were wrong. The river section of the trip was nothing more than a shallow, slippery boulder garden. 
our progress was slow. After traveling at an incredibly slow pace for the better part of the day, we had finally reached some open water. I was happy to stop for a quick lunch and was really looking forward to camp and a nice warm fire to dry off. I think we all enjoyed the evening, sitting under a dry tarp, cooking, and relaxing around the fire. The following day, we had for some reason planned as a rest day. We still had almost 20 portages to complete. Many of them were marked as undiscoverable. We would laugh about this decision later on in the trip, but for now, there was nothing to do but relax and make the best of this beautiful lake. Hopefully we can find some bass in these lakes. Well, some Since of us have already. <laughs> <laughs> that was a river. That's true. But yeah, it's supposed to be Lake Trout Lake, but it's closed. Yeah. Day three was supposed to be filled with lots of bass and a fish fry. But as it turned out, we wouldn't catch any fish and instead climb up a steep hill at the far end of the lake to an impressive lookout. come up here with these glorious men, these glorious lads, up here on this peak, oh so noble. I feel like reciting epic poetry, but I don't know any. So I'll just leave it at that. Nicely said, Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> With a storm on the horizon, we would only have time for a few more casts before the wind would blow us back to camp for the evening. Everyone would chip in, moving the fire pit to a new, more sheltered location, processing firewood, and carrying on with our pointless conversations. Stop wasting film Your on point. this. Anticline point. We could go on point. for hours. It's like we, we get Diabetes the point, point. right? Rum. <laughs> it's like we get the point. Uh, I'd say, say it was pointless. Yeah. The guy who did uh, the coconut song, like. Oh, yeah. Um, We're halfway done the trip. And um, 
quarter down the distance. <laughs> we got the hard part behind us. Yeah, yeah. it's not a good sign, is it? No. Definitely a lot more flight when all the cameras are rolling, right? Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> really, I was thinking, yeah, no. Yeah. Nope, I'm good. No? I'm good. Okay. Well played. Yeah. Good, good lad. <laughs> It would be a fairly early night for us, as we needed to be up early the following day to hopefully make some distance. As Xander said, halfway through the trip, we'd only completed a quarter of the distance. Not exactly an ideal situation, but with the unknown condition of the numerous portages and water level of the river, we really did need to get moving. Okay, morning of day four, I believe it is. We're on the water in pretty good time today. Uh, actually, not really. <laughs> it's almost nine o'clock, but we do have to get on our way, especially after having a rest day yesterday. So hopefully the weather holds out for us. Yeah, it should be a good day. Let's head her to Whiskey Lake. A couple of hours later, we had made decent progress. Two portages done, and on to the biggest lake of the trip with a tailwind. Eventually, after a windy paddle, we would arrive at one of the most scenic spots on the trip, the section of river between Whiskey and Pecor's Lake. This section of river was not only gorgeous, but thankfully had more than enough water to make the paddle all the more enjoyable. That's a big beaver. That looks like pretty clear. By the time we made it over the log jam and continued down the river, we were starting to run out of daylight. We would complete one more terrible portage before deciding to camp at the end of the trail. Thank 
I do get quite a few comments that I sound like a complete redneck. <laughs> Well, it was a little bit of an interesting afternoon there with the last portage being kind of rough, but once we actually found where it started, it wasn't too bad. And we found a pretty nice little tucked away spot on the portage. And I don't know, how's everyone feeling about tomorrow? We think it's going to be dubious. Dubious, yeah. Have my doubts. Yeah. Like. 10 plus portages tomorrow, 14 left on the trip. 14 portages Anderson's left on the trip, so yeah, that's, we've had it. how many have we done so far? Uh, like, like five or six, six like maybe? Four? Yeah. Five? Yeah, five or six. We got quite a waste, well, it's not that far distance wise, but there so we, the we unknowns. Day, and then we had, this was a warm up day for tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we're just, just keeping the battery Building. charged for, uh, Big day Morning, Xander. Morning of day five. How's today go? Great, man. I'm just looking back at the campsite and it's really interesting because if you were to just canoe down this river, there'd be no remnants of our uh, existence there. It's so tucked away and back in the bush. Yep. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a nice camp last night. It's cool, eh? Yeah, it really was. Feeling great. Big day today? Yeah. 13 portages, potentially. Yeah. Which is uh, not insignificant. Have you ever done 13 portages in a day? I'm trying to think. I don't know. Maybe that'd be right up there with the most I've ever done in a day. Easily. I feel like I might have. Yeah. Yeah. It wouldn't be common though. <laughs> Longest being 410, shortest being 5 yeah. meters. But, uh, I like the 5 meter ones. Yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be a good day. Yeah. Perfect should, weather for it. Should be, man. So. Cool. Talking smack about power lines and Keenan's just seething inside. <laughs> Most blue sky we've seen. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty nice right now. It's gorgeous. 
I dig it. making progress, but it was still a slow grind. Paddle, portage, film, repeat. Between the fact that there were four people all trying to document a trip, that the portages were not maintained, and that the area was really pretty amazing and no one wanted to ramrod their way through it, we just were not making the kind of progress we needed to in order to meet our deadline. We noticed the logging road that might enable us to hike back to our vehicles and shave off a good day's paddle. It almost seemed like the perfect plan. It would also allow us to really just enjoy the rest of the journey. Everyone agreed. Although we had made our route quite a bit easier by removing almost a full day's travel, we still had one major obstacle in the way. The low water levels were back with us once again. We would have to make our way up a dried up river and across some marshland before we could hopefully make it to some open water again. And our final lake of the trip. got no trail. Seems to be no navigable water here and uh, Xander just sent his drone up to see if we can find a little path through these cattails because she's pretty thick and swampy and we've got a few hundred meters before we even get to the mouth of the creek here so hopefully maybe we can find something but if not it'll be a slog through this section. We would find a way through the maze of cattails and paddle, drag, and portage our way through some pretty amazing scenery before we would make it out onto May Lake. I think we were all fairly tired and ready to settle in for another evening at camp. I know I was. We have made it onto May Lake, which is where we're supposed to be camping tonight. And that was a long day. It was a real long day. But anyways, we're here. Looks beautiful, a little sandy beach at the put in and some big cliffs here, a couple islands that we could possibly camp on. And I'm looking forward to dinner. So I'm real hungry right now, but awesome day.
whip around and then I'm gonna go whip over to the thing. That was a uh, that was a trip. It yeah. was what it was. It was it a lot was, more of an adventure than expected. It's so enjoyable being around like you guys in yeah. this group. Yeah, it was amazing. It was fun. It was I had fun. a lot of fun. Yeah. 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 One what fish. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, that did not happen. Oh. It was cold, wet, or windy most of the time, and fish barely at all. So. That was my favorite part. Taking like, taking the rest day was my mistake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we would be we would be um, sitting pretty today if yeah. we didn't take that rest. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was an awesome trip. Flew by. It's yeah. Fast, didn't it? It yeah. was very fast. Yeah, it was, it was fast. very very fast. Stone Xander. Um, I heard this quote recently that someone was asked. Is it the journey or the destination? And they said the company. Uh, well said. It's the destination. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm yeah, the uh, company. Well, guys. And cheers. Yeah. That was a great trip. Great trip. Cheers. Cheers. Same cheers. route next year this time. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it a yearly thing. Oh. <laughs> we go to Algonquin. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, we gotta get John to Algonquin. <laughs> it's just oh. like, yeah, that's crazy, man. Oh, I still can't believe it. <laughs> yeah, that's, cr that's crazy. You've never been to Algonquin. You like interior? Them? Interior. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've been to Highway 60 plenty. Oh. We were very lucky on our last night. The stars were bright and we would spend a little time capturing some pictures of the Milky Way. This had turned out to be a special and unique trip, an experience that I'm grateful to have had. Canoeing for me has always been to get away from people and things and enjoy time alone with no distractions. I'm not the kind of person to attend group gatherings, go to work parties, and I'm certainly not a social butterfly, which is why this trip was such a great experience. I think being on a canoe trip can bring out the best and worst in people and teach you a lot about the people you are with and yourself. With the wrong group, you can go from friend to foe in the blink of an eye. I had entered this trip with no expectations and an open mind. I told myself, worst case, it would be a long week. But as it turned out, I would leave grateful to have met three new friends.